Welcome riders, Ryan here with Richardson Motor Works again. Uh, today we're going to show you how to perform an oil change on your bike. A good one, one that will be you know clean, you won't have oil everywhere. Um, I can't tell you how many times I see oil changes done at dealerships, things like that. There's just oil everywhere because they do them quick and it drips everywhere. You think your bike's leaking when in reality they just didn't clean it up. Um, first things first, always warm your bike up. Had it running outside for a minute here. Um, let it warm up. It doesn't have to get smoking hot. You don't have to wait till the fan kicks on. Um, just wait till it gets to, you know, 150, 180, if you have a temp gauge somewhere in there. Uh, once again, you don't have to let it cook outside because once the fan kicks on, then it's really hot. It's not comfortable to burn your hands, dropping this oil when it gets that hot. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, first things first, pop your oil fill, which is on the other side of this bike. Um, just let it flow out a little bit better. Uh, pull your cap off um, where you fill your oil from. My sight glass is also on that side. We'll get over there when I fill it up so you can see it. Um, next is pull your drain plug. Um, they're all over the place. Most of the time they're around a 17 millimeter on metric bikes, but it just, um, it just depends. Uh, sometimes they're an Allen. Uh, most of the time they're pretty visible and it's the lowest, usually the lowest spot on the engine. Um, sometimes if you have like an oil pan, it'll have a spot that sticks down quite a bit farther and it'll be like on the back side. Um, but just look in your owner's manual, look online, easiest way to find it. And once again, be careful if you got this thing smoking hot because oil will be hot. Um, I got it warm, but I didn't get it hot enough that it's going to burn me. As well, you're going to get oil everywhere, so wear gloves if you don't want to get dirty. Um, it's a little dirty. And as this drains here, um, I'll go over a few things. One of the biggest things that I see when people do oil changes at home and things they just don't do to save a few bucks and it absolutely drives me nuts is this crush washer right here on your oil drain plug everyone has one for an oil drain plug it's a crush washer sometimes it's an o-ring harley uses o-rings on theirs just replace it i cannot stress that enough this thing is like two dollars at the most most of the time it's less than a dollar and for that dollar are you really going to risk the chance that this is only supposed to be crushed once, so if you crush it more than once, there's a chance it's going to leak. So are you going to risk four quarts of oil and buy more oil because you didn't want to replace a dollar drain plug or a crush washer? I don't. I always replace it. You don't have a choice if you bring your bike to me. You're paying the dollar. It is what it is. And if I have to take this off and replace it because you did reuse it, then if I drop your oil, I'm not putting your oil back in the bike. You're getting new oil. Whenever oil comes out, you're getting new oil going in. It's just a good rule of thumb. So just replace this if you're at home. And once again, it's maybe $2, but it'll save you the headache of a leak and having to do this again. So as well, once you pull this out, go ahead and pop your oil filter off. Now they make all sorts of oil filter wrenches specific to the brand, for example, Yamaha's got their own, Triumph's got their own. You can buy a kit that sells, you know, several ones. Um, there are a bunch of different options um, for putting them on and off. They make straps like this that tighten, pull them on and off. Um, another thing about oil filters, which is where these come in handy, these do not need to be super tight. Um, it's only about 10 to 12 newton meters, put them on, which is literally hand tight and maybe a quarter turn. I cannot tell you how many times people crank these things down and they are not supposed to be that tight. If you have to struggle to get it off, it was on there way too tight. Hence, where stuff like this comes in to grab them and rip them off. And this is going to destroy it, but if you're changing your oil, you should be changing your oil filter. Go ahead and destroy it to get it off if you have to. Just don't ruin your bike or anything else.
This one wasn't on there too bad. But let it sit and drain for a couple minutes. Um, most of the time after, you know, five, maybe 10 minutes the most, most of it's out of there, especially if you got it nice and warm. If you didn't warm your bike up, you know, you just skip that step, started draining, it might take a little bit longer just because the oil is not as hot, it's not gonna flow as well. Um, but just give it a couple minutes, let it drain. Once, uh, usually once all this is done dripping, you know, and it's just a drop, you're good to go. Um, you want as much of it out of there as you can. Um, another note, a thing to pay attention for is a lot of drain plugs are magnetic um, and they'll pick up, you know, any metal flake debris you have floating around in the engine. Um, if in the event that this one is not, for example, but if you pull out your drain plug, you should always pay attention to what's on it if it's magnetic. Um, there's always going to be a little something on it if it's magnetic. So don't freak out if you get, you know, little, little pieces of stuff, nothing to be worried about. However, if there are significant pieces, meaning, you know, if it's more than a couple millimeters, you know, and you have a lot of it, or if it's, you know, stacked on there, you know, an inch high, if it's all built up, you have a problem. You have something coming apart. Now, there's not a whole lot you can do about it at that point, unless you want to, you know, go digging in your engine, taking it apart. But you should always take a picture of it, you know, just so you kind of know what came out of there and keep an eye on it from that point on. Um, if you are changing your oil because you have a problem, you know, you think something's coming apart, you have some internal issues, um, you're just not sure, you want to check your oil, Make sure that whatever pan you're draining into is clean. Clean it out with a towel, something like that, some brake cleaner so that it is spotless. That way you know that whatever came into this pan was in your oil. So if you have any metal flake in your oil, if you're finding chunks of stuff, you know it all came from your oil. It wasn't sitting in the pan beforehand. Um, this oil is pretty clean, however, if has a metal sheen to it. It's hard to describe unless you've seen it, but if you can see, you know, distinct patterns, it almost looks like a copper flake, um, something like that. Once again, you probably have something coming apart. Um, not a lot you can do about it unless you want to go digging into your engine, but nine times out of 10, if you take care of your bike, you don't got to worry about it. Just pay attention. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. This is drained enough. Um, it's still draining a little bit, but it'll be all right. We're going to I always start with the oil filter. Um, you can use whatever oil filter you want. I know K and N is, this is a Yamaha filter. Um, I always use OEM stuff. However, if you don't want to go about buying, you know, a hundred different oil wrenches, if you're always buying, selling new bikes, stuff like that, K and N makes an oil filter that has just a 17, standard 17 millimeter nut on the end that you can take it on and off. So you don't have to buy any special wrenches. Um, K and N pretty much makes oil filters for everything so you don't have to worry about you know not having one for your bike and you know 17 millimeter wrench really easy to get on and off um, when you're putting your oil filter on important thing you always want to put a little bit of oil on the o-ring here the whole o-ring it doesn't have to be a ton literally just enough to kind of get it wet it helps it it helps it seal um, once again you don't need to soak it on there or anything just enough so that it's wet um, as well, always make sure when you pull your old oil filter off, there's an O-ring on every oil filter. You want to make sure that when you pull your old one off, that old O-ring comes off with your oil filter. Every now and then you'll get one that'll stick to the engine and then when you go to put your new one back on, you'll have two O-rings and it will leak. So just make sure when you pull off your old oil filter that that O-ring comes off with it. Um, Every mating surface that the oil filter sits against is silver, so you should be able to see that the black O-ring's there or not. You can always just rub your finger across it as well. Um, it's usually pretty obvious if they're stuck on there, but just double check before you put your new one back on. And once again, these do not have to be tightened to the moon, just hand tight and then Take your ratchet and your wrench or whatever oil filter wrench you have and you know maybe a quarter turn, a half turn, and that's it. You don't need to tighten it any more than that.
you have one of these rubber ones like this, it slips a little bit, but it'll only go if you're tightening it. Just make sure you have this towards the way you're tightening it so it pushes on the filter. If you have it this way and you're trying to tighten it, it won't do anything. Now I know I said a quarter turn or a half turn and it looked like I just turned it a million times there. I didn't. It's just because this slips a little bit as you're turning it so it doesn't turn as much as I was turning it. Um, after you got that on there, once again, just make sure it's on there. If you can't move it with your hand, you're good. Get you your new crush washer. New. Don't reuse the old one. You can, but chance you're going to be doing this again. on there now if you are halfway through this you know you've already pulled everything off you don't want to reuse this crush washer or you do want to reuse this crush washer because you don't want to run back to the store or whatever i get that but if you have any sealant any kind of you know three bond anything like that that seal you know side engine covers gasket stuff like that just put a little bit on your drain plug and it'll help seal it if you absolutely have to reuse this but once again just don't, it's two bucks, just buy a new one. It'll, it'll save you a headache. Um, once you got your new one on here, you go ahead and put it in. At this point, you go ahead and move this, your oil pan out of the way. You might still drip a little bit. So if you're on your shop, your garage floor, wherever, um, you can put a towel down so it's not dripping on your floor, however, you know, tightening this, drop your socket or something, drop it in the oil, then you gotta clean everything off. It's just a mess. So I always move it out of the way since we're done with it. Now you can tighten these. I always take it hand tight or so, and then grab the torque wrench, torque it down. Um, every manufacturer is a little bit different. Every bike's a little bit different. They're usually 25 Newton meters to about 40 Newton meters, but there are some that a lot more than that, some that are a little bit less than that. So just read your own. Um, for example, this bike is 40 Newton meters. So I'm going to crank it down to 40 here. And once again, they, they, these are a thing that, you know, holding your oil in, I see people all the time. 40 is kind of, kind of strong, kind of tight in my opinion for a drain plug, but that's what they call for. So that's where it's getting. However, I cannot tell you how many times I see people once again tighten these to the moon because they're scared that it's going to leak. Do not tighten it to the moon. Can't tell you how many times I've seen people strip these from tightening it or they get it so tight when they're putting it on that it splits this crush washer even though it's brand new and then you have an oil leak or God forbid you tighten it way way too much you pull out the threads and if you pull out the threads if you're lucky, you can just replace your oil pan, but you have to drop your exhaust and all sorts of stuff to get your oil pan off. Or there are some bikes where this threads into part of your case. Um, for example, older Ducatis um, are real bad about that. And people would tighten those to the moon. And when you do that, it is in half of your engine case. So if you want to get that replaced, you basically have to buy a whole new engine because you can't just buy one half of an engine case because they're milled together. So you have to buy a whole engine it's just just don't do it just don't over tighten it it's a lot of headaches a lot of problems um, next step for me at this point is always cleaning this off if you take it to a dealership um, there are a lot of dealerships uh, here in my local area um, that have you know very quick oil changes people think oh man you know they're only charging me you know twenty dollars labor you know thirty dollars labor for an oil change well you go to those places they're gonna leave it like this. They're gonna put oil back in your bike. They might wipe it down once and that's it. Um, on a lot of bikes, this oil drips all over your exhaust. It gets in the crevices in your exhaust and it will just drip and drip and drip. Drip on your garage floor, drip while you're riding. I always clean it off. Um, you can use brake cleaner, um, make all sorts of stuff for this. Just make sure you're not using something that's too terribly harsh on paint, um, you know, throttle body cleaner, stuff like that. 
is what I'm using at the moment. Um, that's not going to hurt anything, you know, just don't be spraying it all the way up here. This stuff will eat or discolor plastics and things like that. So, so make sure you're just keeping it, you know, down here where the oil's at. You're not going to hurt anything down here. But if you're spraying like a wild man, get it up here, you're going to discolor all your plastics and stuff like that. It's, it's a nightmare, so don't do that. The good thing about using stuff like this as well is even if you get a lot of oil off your exhaust, this might still be wet and dripping. However, the second that your exhaust gets hot, this stuff will evaporate instantly. So as long as you've got all your oil sprayed away with this and wiped off, don't worry about this dripping because it'll burn up as soon as the exhaust gets hot and you don't have to worry about it. Now, if you have access to it and are really OCD, you can always use some compressed air from your compressor, you know, air gun, blow out down here to really get it all out. I'm not gonna do that just because I know a lot of you at home do not have access to stuff like that. So I'm just gonna clean it off as good as I can with my towel here. Once again, you'll still have a couple of drips from this stuff just being a liquid, but as soon as it gets hot, it'll evaporate. And from here, we can go to the other side of the bike and fill it up with oil. Okay, so one thing to note here is we've got about three quarts in here. We've got one, one left, so to speak, but if you'll look down here, you can see that our oil is almost to the top of the fill line. Here's your low line, here's your high line. Um, with it this close, I'm gonna go ahead and start it up like this because when you start the bike up, it's going to suck some oil into the oil filter since we had to put the oil filter on sideways. If you would have put the oil, on, oil filter on from the bottom, you can fill the oil filter up with oil and then screw it on so you don't have to you know, run your bike without oil for a second. However, when the oil filters go on sideways like this, you can't fill them up, so it'll just dump everywhere as you're trying to screw it on. So, but at this line, fill it towards the top of the line as close as you can. Um, it's not gonna hurt it to start it anywhere in between the two lines, but at this point, since we don't have all our oil in yet, and this line is gonna go down once we start it, we only wanna start it, let it run for maybe 15, 20 seconds, if that, just long enough to get the oil circulating and then shut it off and then we'll come back and fill it up here a little bit more, so. Also, always make sure you put your fill cap back on here um, before you start this up or you will spray oil everywhere. Um, it's, uh, it'll fly out of there to say the least, so. With that back on, the oil there, go ahead and start it up. And that's all you need. As you can see, it went down. Now I'll let it sit here for maybe a minute or two, if that, and it might come back up into the window just a little bit. It's definitely not going to go back up to where it was but it should every now and then it'll come up and you should be able to see it but there's nothing wrong if it doesn't come back up you didn't do anything wrong it just means you have to pour some more oil in you always have to pour some more in after this it's just a matter of how much as you can see some of it's dripping down in there a little bit but we'll give it a minute here or so and then fill it back up okay we've waited a minute or two here um now that minute you can unscrew your cap again and go ahead and put, if you had, for example, this one, we had, you know, barely any left on the third liter here. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in first. 
Um, don't open a new one until you have to, so to speak, because um, this probably isn't going to fill it up to where it needs to be, but there's a chance it might. So, As well, most of you are going to want to use a funnel for this. I do this all the time, so I'm used to pouring it in here. However, um, it can get very messy if um, you're not used to it, so just, uh, just be aware of that. Okay, now that we've got all our oil in there, you can see kind of where I put it at on the level. Um, it's about halfway in the middle. Now keep in mind that as long as it's between these two marks, you're fine. Um, you do not want it below the bottom one, or if it's at the bottom one, I always try and keep it in the middle. Um, the middle is the best place to be. If you're at the top, not a big deal, as long as you can see you know, somewhat of an air bubble at the top. Um, now keep in mind, once this bike gets smoking hot, this oil level will rise a little bit. That's why you don't want it all the way at the top. It's not going to hurt it if it's all the way at the top, but you do not want it way overfilled because once again, this oil is going to expand once it gets hot and go up a little bit. So you can go ahead and put your cap back on here. Go ahead and clean up this mess that I made so to speak on this side and at this point now that we've taken you know a couple minutes here I always like to check down here check my oil drain plug on the other side make sure there's no drips or anything that have ran down now that it sat for a couple minutes it looks like i cleaned it off pretty good with my brake cleaner and my towel um, and at this point everything's back on ready to go you're ready to ride okay now we've got our oil filled up everything's done on that side correct level don't have any drips or anything everything looks good you tightened everything down you're ready to ride at this point um, be safe out there. Make sure once again that nothing is dripping or if you have a bunch every now and then you'll get some that'll get caught in the crevices of your exhaust and whatnot. It's almost impossible to get it all out depending on some of your exhaust unless you have you know brake cleaner and compressed air. So you might get a few drops. Um, nothing to worry about as long as your drain plug isn't leaking and your oil filter isn't leaking. If you get a drop back here or something as long as it's not starting up here you're fine it's just extra on your exhaust um, but it should be clean and you shouldn't have any drips if you cleaned it off and did it right um, but other than that that's it and you're ready to ride and as always if you do not want the hassle of doing this yourself you don't like the mess you don't want to deal with it richardson motor works is more than happy to take care of you bring it to us we'll get you taken care of